Here we are asked to evaluate the given integral, and you're probably completing this question within the context of learning, or at least reviewing, all of the techniques of integration. And one of the techniques involves what the book calls an obvious substitution. I admit in this problem the substitution isn't terribly obvious whatsoever, in fact. But what we're going to try to do is make a substitution so that we can transform the given integral into a form that resembles this form here. And the reason we want to do that is because this form here is a well-known integral. It ends up equaling an arc tangent function. But first and foremost, we have to try to manipulate the given one so that it starts to resemble the one right here. And to begin to do that, we can see that the form down below has our variable squared plus a constant squared. So we want to try to manipulate the denominator so that we get that sort of format in our problem. We want the variable squared. Right now, our variable is raised to the power of 4. And the only way to really turn that into the variable squared is to rewrite it as t squared and then that quantity squared. So that begins to look like the form that we've highlighted in yellow here, although it's not perfectly matching it just yet. And then we're going to have to rewrite the 10 so that we have a constant squared. So in order to do that, we'd actually have to rewrite it as the square root of 10 squared. And that gives us a constant squared. And don't forget that the square root of 10 squared is indeed still 10. So that's just a little bit of rewriting to get the problem started. But we still have a problem here because the form that we desire doesn't have a variable in the numerator. And our equation or our expression does still have a variable in the numerator. So we have to make the substitution now. And it turns out that the best way to do this is to let, we'll come down below here, we're going to let u equal the t squared. And in a moment, we're going to see why this is going to be useful. But why don't we copy our integral and bring it down here so we can see why this is going to work. Now, the reason that's going to work is because then in the denominator, where we have this t squared in the parentheses, we can replace that t squared with u. So this actually becomes u squared plus radical 10 squared. So it begins to take on the form that we wanted, where we have the variable squared plus the constant squared. But we got to get rid of this variable in the numerator. And luckily, the substitution works well, because if you differentiate it, you're going to get du is equal to 2t dt. And then what I like to do is actually solve this equation for dt. So to do that, you would just divide both sides of it by 2t. So then hopefully we can see that the dt, after we cancel those 2t's out, would equal du over 2t. So that's the substitution we're going to make for dt. We're going to replace it with du over 2t. Now this is very fortuitous because in the numerator we still have the t. However, looking carefully, the t in the numerator and the 1 in the denominator are going to actually cancel each other out. This leaves behind a 1, essentially. And actually, if you look really carefully, you have a 1 over 2 here. So you can actually factor out that 1 over 2 to the outside of the integral. And then you're left with the du in the numerator divided by the u squared plus your constant squared. And this is really good because remember from earlier, our goal was to try to rewrite our problem so that it looked just like that form. So what we'll do is copy and bring that down here so we can kind of compare it side by side with what we have. There it is right there. So yeah, we've got the du over the u squared plus constant squared. We can clearly see from this formula that that's going to equal 1 over our constant. So we're going to have 1 over our constant of radical 10 times the inverse tangent of u over that very same constant, radical 10. Let's not forget that we still had a factor of 1 half in front of our integral. So we're going to have to multiply the 1 half by the 1 over radical 10. And to do, the, to do that, remember, you just multiply the numerators. So 1 times 1 is 1. 2 times radical 10 is 2 radical 10. And then we have the answer. In terms of u, we don't want the answer in terms of u. 
we have to go back and replace u with the original substitution that we had made. Remember, u was equal to t squared. So all you really have to do at the end here is just replace your u with the t squared, and then also include your constant of integration. So you'll have your t squared over square root of 10 plus your constant of integration, and this will give you the answer to the question.